We're currently in the process of filming at the middle of the night because it is God knows how many degrees, 100 degrees during the day and it just stays all the way to 8 p.m. So now it's like one some morning right now, but that's when we thrive. And so right now we've got the oil coolers in place. Now we're going to upgrade this to the most ultimate E85 setup possible. Why E85? Well, first of all, it's one of the best upgrades you can do to a rotary. Why is it such a big deal? E85 is nasty stuff. It gums stuff up, it's corrosive to the wrong type of materials. So we've got the best of the best to make the ultimate E85 setup for any two rotor rotary engine. So let's do that. This one thing, the softest, sweetest thing is the magic behind everything else going on here. It looks super soft, it's extremely flexible, but this is PTFE centered nylon. I don't know what other ingredients, materials are used to make this, but this is probably the most awesome hose I've ever seen. So we're gonna be running all of the 6AN lines with this stuff. 6AN is 3 8 You'll hear those two maybe tossed back and forth. The whole point here is we're gonna run one fat line up to the front and then two lines to each the primary and the secondary fuel rails and then come back to one, go back to the return line. I currently, on the three rotor, have it where they run all in a row. And that works fine, but that works fine for race gas. Let's get the intake manifold off, let's get all this stuff off so we can take a look at our current situation and how we're gonna change it. This, the throttle cable off, there. Everything's just covered in like a light mist of oil. I'd rather have that than no oil at all, I guess. Let's take these pipes off. I'll take this side off. Get the throttle position off. Take that off. What the hell is that? Okay. What? Forgot, forgot to put an intake in this gasket. <laughs> forgot to do what? Oh, there's no gasket. We were in such a rush. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of funny setup. We have the feed line, and we have our flex fuel sensor, which is not connected yet, and our pressure sensor. Those are both uh, in line on the feed side. We're going to put those on the return side. So we'll take this little baby line off. The rails are gonna stay the same. The rails have the ORB adapter O-ring. We will be doing is this exact same setup on the three rotor. The, one of the biggest challenges with E85 is that there's 30% more just flowing at all times. I just don't want localized loss of pressure or God knows whatever else. Everything's gonna get everything at all times. That's, that's the goal with this. And then on the back side, there should be a, a butt plug Yep, right there, cap. That's, that's where my fuel system just ended, is this little cap right here. One thing I did that I'm very happy about is tested the idea that an RX-7 could run on a returnless fuel system. That's what we've proven with this, is that it's not an RX-7, but it's basically an RX-7. Now a rotary actually does a pretty decent job, not going into boost, heavy. 15, we did go into 15 pounds of boost, yeah, but the, you start running into the fuel injectors being less efficient, but we did it and we're not gonna do it again. <laughs> so both of our rails are disconnected. They're all sitting here pretty with six AN fittings. So let's take a look at what's gonna connect down to there. What you're seeing here, I'm gonna pop one of these out. This is their own high pressure, high temperature, push fit lock setup. I mean, you can buy a crimping tool for this, but you can see there's a little collar. You separate the insides of the hose, this goes in like that, it starts to crush this in, and then, of course, applying torque to this outer piece crushes it in there even further. This is a very high quality piece of equipment and they're reusable, that's probably one of my favorite parts. The stock fuel system on a C5 Corvette is regulated, there's no one-to-one -one rising ratio because it's naturally aspirated, it's never gonna boost. So, the max you get is like, whatever, 48, 50 PSI and that's it doesn't rise with boost. You lose fuel pressure as you increase boost, so your fuel injectors don't work as well. So both fuel lines are gonna run up from the pumps, go into one fuel filter, massive fuel filter provided by AEM, and then go in a nice long fuel line all the way to the front. We're gonna have it go to each of the rails, and then come back through a regulator in the return line. So we've got a lot of these Y pieces to split and connect the two together. We've got some bulkheads so we can weld the fuel lines inside the tank 
obviously I've got that all done already. The tank's out. More Y lines because it is confusing as hell, but the C5 Corvette actually uses fuel pressure to pump fuel from one tank into the other. We'll go over that in a second. AEMs provided these beefy kind of Bosch 044 style pumps. They are 85 capable, in tank or out of tank, whatever, doesn't matter either way. This is the pickup side. And then the return, or excuse me, the feed output is 6AN. It's got this fancy little check valve thing. Check this out. This would be really nice for running both pumps, but there's a whole check valve inside of this piece. Let's look at the map of how much chaos we have. Two pumps inside of the tank. We've got two bulkheads, which basically are fancy long pieces to connect through the wall you know, of the, of the fuel tank. Elbows out, they both go together to a Y piece. That goes to this. Look at this, this is a massive 10 an filter and it's, it's got a replaceable cartridge inside of it. So nice, easy, accessible fuel filter. I'm oversizing that so that way that's not the limitation at all. All of that is in the back of the car that all runs up to the front then Ys off and goes to both fuel rails so that way it's not daisy chained so we can feed both of them at the same time. Then they both go to a fuel regulator and then the regulator sends fuel line all the way back through the metal line and then back into the tank. That took way too much brain power to try and solve while maintaining as much of the car as possible but then finding that, you know, where the limitations are. Cause we're gonna be running E85. So it's not just about maintaining a certain level of pressure, but the amount of flow is nuts. It's 30% more for the same horsepower. So here's a fairly standard setup for a fuel pressure regulator. And this is the boost line that's helping regulate that pressure. This is the return line, which is gonna go back to the back of the car. And these are gonna come from both of the fuel rails. We're basically building a car from scratch here though. That's really the fascinating part. Cause a lot of these pieces, just don't exist otherwise. They're just not on the car. It's a really basic line and the car is happy. So these should, oh God, yes. These are 10 AN. If you want to sound all fancy, this is a 10 AN setup. And 10 AN, here's the trick to all of it. You divide it by 16. So a 10 AN, 10 divided by 16 simplifies to 5 eighths, 10, 10 sixteenths, 5 eighths. It's a 5 eighths line needed to run a 10 AN fitting. But you notice these are two different sizes. I should say two different sides. The funny part is the threads do actually work both ways. So that's where it gets really confusing because you sound like a complete idiot trying to order things. This side is called 10 ORB, O-ring based, I don't know, O-ring something. And that's meant for things that have an O-ring boss. I think is probably the correct word. O-rings don't require all of the torque. These are all made out of aluminum. So you're, you're not gonna wrench on them that hard, but there you go. Now we can connect this up to 10 AN lines. Should be like this. Almost always, almost every single time your lines, your fuel lines, your oil lines are always gonna end up with a female connector. So that's why you always get these things to have some sort of male connector. Let's look at the complexity of everything involved now that you've got all the pieces here. First step is this is the edge of the fuel tank. And what I'm gonna do is have two fuel pumps. Obviously these things need to flow an insane amount inside of the fuel system. I'm gonna still keep the float so we have our fuel level and all that, but I'm not gonna use these quick disconnect lines. I'm gonna use those actually for return and the fact that the Corvette has two tanks. What I am gonna do is put these two, at the very least these two, I have a third one just in case, into the side of this and then weld them to that aluminum. They're all aluminum. Obviously I'm gonna have to do a little bit of, probably some sort of brushing to get this to a aluminum status. And uh, on the inside, of course, the nuts to hold them in there as well, but it's gonna be welded. So that way I can pass through the bulkhead or pass through that with liquid tight. There's no liquid that's gonna come out of it other than inside of this line. So we'll have two 6AN lines coming out of the tank. They'll both go quickly, directly vertical because on the car, the tire is actually right past that. So we'll have two lines going up vertical. Each line will then go into one of these, these are two 6AN lines going into one 8AN. The 8AN will then go through the fuel system, the fuel filter right here. It'll go through, this thing's meant for much more, but that's the point, I don't want that to be a restriction. Go in this side, go out that side, 
and then it'll come out to an 8 AN line. This piece here is then going to come out of that and run the smaller line here. I use the word smaller carefully, it's not small at all. So I'm going to have a nice 8 AN line running underneath the car going up to the fuel lines. So as soon as they get to the fuel lines, that's where this other one comes into play. It's going to split off and then using a variety of these 6 AN lines, go to each of the fuel rails. Fuel rails have the other side, we'll Y off of those, and then those will go to this. This is a two line, there's two lines in, pressure regulator. So that's the NTP port for like pressure sensing and whatnot. One line in, second line in, and then return. So I'll have two lines in, one from the you know primary and one from the secondary fuel rails, and then this one going with another 6AN line back all the way through to somewhere over here. I do have, these are 3 8 inch lines and 3 8 time, well, times two, you know, doing your fractions is 6 16 and that is undoubtedly the 6 AN line. So I can convert that properly to 6 AN, 3 8 and make everything work without being a major restriction. Got a lot of smaller pieces here. The one piece nobody's gonna ask because this is already super complicated, but the one thing that nobody's gonna ask about are these right here. These are six to six AN lines. And realistically, I'm using one of them on a feed line and one of them on a return. Literally, literally, the fuel pressure that comes out of this goes over to the other tank and spins a little wheel, kind of like a turbocharger. And that wheel spins another wheel, like a turbocharger, that dumps fuel from one saddlebag to the other. That is not a electrical pump, it's a pressure-based pump and so it, it siphons off of the fuel pressure. So I'd have to have one connecting into that, that little merry-go-round and then one coming back and dumping back into here. So I have the second one just in case we want to feed it with AN lines uh, if these just are not adequate enough. This one is the fuel line in and a lot of Corvette guys, as I've seen, just upgrade the pump inside of there. One 6AN line, you're, you're good. But E85 is going to prove that to be too much. So what I think I'm going to do is turn this line into a return line. So just cut it off right there, well, you know, undo this crimp, there's a return line. This is also a return line, but it's 5 16 so it's slightly smaller. And then this last one, I think, yep, just, is also a return line. So I'm gonna have one return line for the other tank, one return line for the whole fuel system. Not sure what that's gonna be just yet. All right, maybe this looks a little less complicated. Uh, you can kinda see, if you see these steps, we'll cut it down into pieces. This is, the fuel pump inside of the tank, the tank lines there, kind of lines up there. Both of them will do the same thing, and then these both go up into hoses here. The one hose has this overly complicated piece, it'll be like this, and this goes off to the other tank, doing that whole other tank thing. But then this line, still 6AN, goes into one of these. The other one just goes straight into the other one of these. So both of these go to an 8AN line, and then that will go to this massive fuel filter. The fuel filter will then go to this end and then another long, this one will run almost the length of the car, 8AN line all the way to the front of the car. So this will come up somewhere near the 13B. Then two 6AN lines will split off, go to both fuel rails, which are for these. Both fuel rails take it in and then on the back side they'll come out and then the two fuel rail lines will go into these two here and here. Those will both meet up and be fuel pressurized, <laughs> measured right here, and then this one will go all the way back. Well, actually I should say, take that back. So this one is a 6AN line. It'll then connect to, oh, I have the piece in, actually in the car. Hang on, it's the piece that saved my ass originally. So on the return line, it'll just go to this one right here. So that bottom part will come up and then hook into what is currently the feed line. It's the return line now, and it'll run through the hard line all the way to the back of the car. All right, so these four pieces are all connecting to the fuel rails. Let's go ahead and set them up and get an idea of size space requirement. One of the things Abel introduced me to is the things, the finer quality of things in life. And these fittings are probably the finest and I will not stop preaching about that. You'll see that these do not, these are 90 degree bends, but they curve. And so it does not have as much of an effect on the fuel system as the ones that just <laughs> crash and do 90 degrees and they're done. These are meant to keep uh, minimal fuel pressure loss along the way. So what's gonna happen, where did I say, okay. 
what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have some sort of fuel line feed coming in. We'll mount this somewhere over here, and we'll have two fuel lines coming from here to each of these. Nice and clean, no obstruction. So they go from an 8 AN to two 6 ANs. We're gonna have to plan where those hoses are gonna come in at. I'm probably gonna do something down here. Then the other two are back there. Let's go grab the rest of our ingredients. So here's our fuel pressure regulator. And this is a piece that was not in the system before, but we're gonna have both of these rear lines. This will set up somewhere like, like this, hidden back here. And so both the fuel lines that are coming out of the both lines. One goes into here, one goes into here, and then this line is gonna go into this, which is now our return line. And if you wanna make it more confusing, see this little guy right here, this is our pressure sensor. The pressure sensor is gonna go into the, here. So we eliminate one fitting, and then this is gonna connect in probably to the return. It's probably gonna connect right where it's at, because that's gonna allow us to convert the AN fitting to this, and life is good. So now we're taking off the fuel pressure sensor because I need to see if the pressure sensor, the correct size for the fuel pressure regulator. Right, so I got this adapter here as a inline 6AN thing. I'm just gonna pull out every single uh, wrench I own. I made sure we wouldn't have any fuel leaks on an experimental vehicle. First drive 400 miles. And we did not burn down. Only downside is I uh, put way too much effort into closing this piece off. That's promising. All of that work to see if this fits into here. And oh, thank you, it does. So now let's put the intake manifold back on and see where we can and cannot put this growing lobster. So going in the back, yeah. <laughs> it's a bummer because I actually simplifying wise but you know what's nice about it going in the back there though is all we'll have up front is two lines you know just kind of disappearing off now that we know where the feed lines coming in at let's go ahead and make our very first wire wire jesus our, our very first hose these are the push fittings or the crimp push fittings very similar if you watch the oil fitting video the oil coolers and everything almost identical but we're using a slightly different material a much more forgiving external material. So, this doesn't happen. What's nice is that we can start the first half. We know what piece we're gonna use. We're using 90s on both sides, so this isn't even an issue. Same as the oil cooler video, and you should check that video out if you uh, have a chance, if you're not uh, seeing every video on here. It's got the outside piece, it's got a piece they call the olive, and then it's got the inner piece. This is very much one of the finest E85 compatible systems. It's not gonna eat away at this. Look at this, that Band-Aid thing, <laughs> as well as the inside PTFE. This stuff is nasty. The cool thing is, this threading is meant for this he helical setup in here. Let me back up a step. We gotta put this piece over like this. Be careful not to push the outer cover too far down. And then thread this onto the actual helical pieces. It's not thread it wherever you want. It's find the threading as if this is like a screw you can actually do this by hand if you're nervous and you've got extra sweat on your palms. But if you need, because <laughs> you're afraid of embarrassing yourself, uh, if you need extra help, uh, use pliers, uh, like kind of soft grip pliers. Do not deform this. So just like the other version, you actually do this, bring it down to the level of the olive. There you go. Last thing, this is already oiled up, but... You'd oil it up, you'd put this in a vise, push this in, but we're gonna take this part off. Bring it, make sure you bring it back to where it was supposed to be. And unlike the steel ones, the, the stainless steel ones where you have to pay attention to the threading and all that, this is much more forgiving. So, boom, you get right into the threads. So I am using massive wrenches. Remember, use AN wrenches. But I'm also just feeling it. I'm not, not getting crazy. And you'll, you'll, you will. You'll feel it just get really instantly firm. And so because this outside piece is not the stainless, it is so much easier to work with. And in terms of, like, just comparison, not the other stuff has its massive benefits.
and we'll go right there. So nice, clean setup. This swivels, so you're not worrying about you know, positioning this compared to the other end. That is a clean piece of equipment. I personally like doing it this way, so that way you know exactly how far the other piece needs to be cut. And I'm sure there are people out there, uh, you know, veterans of this world, that just like, oh yeah, that's, that's some sort of string method or God knows what. So we have our very first line ready to go. And look at, just look at how flexible that is. Oh my God, that, oh, I love it. Of course, it'll firm up as you uh, uh, fill it. But So I'm thinking that we'll end up having this near the oil filter. And again, this is deceiving. It's gonna actually end up being, we're gonna measure it right to the edge of the fitting, the internal edge of the fitting. Yeah, sorry for the darkness, guys. Um, the fuel line is gonna run underneath the, the electrical wire, so those will sit on top of it, you know, kind of priority-wise. And this will sit down here. This other one will go over to here, where I'm holding the whole thing. And then behind that is the fitting for the 8AN, and that'll go down under the car. So somewhere in here, this line isn't as long as I was expecting. This is the part I'm following to the T from Holly's own website because I do not want to make them look bad by my own foolishness, which is very easy to do. So, and what we're going to do is do what they said. They're, you come in at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to go right into the center of this. Oh, that is really easy. And you go 90% of the way around this. Mind you, you don't have to get perfect with the, the circle. You, you want to get as best as possible so you don't have much waste, but you're going to trim it to that little olive thing later. Just give me a little bit of sawing action. And they say with this last bit, this is being super precautious, I think, on their part, but you use scissors. These aren't scissors, but, you know, so you're not pulling the threads out of there. That was really easy. I'm not gonna lie. That was way easier than I was expecting. There we go. Oh, that. That's a race hose right there. <laughs> it's Jared when he sees girls. You like playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. It's in your hand there, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's do a final test fit. This one doesn't matter the exact length as much as the next one does. That's more of our have to hit the same target as the first. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna bend backwards a little bit like that. So that way the other line gets more of a straighter shot as well. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and continue these, and then Jared's gonna check back in with me after uh, probably five hours. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing what we just did, get all four lines for all two fuel rails moving. See you guys in a second. I couldn't stay away from the camera too long, ignoring the fact that this is a wiring harness meant for a three rotor. You can see both lines. That, look, that just looks like a race engine. That looks so good to me. Oh, that's clean. Okay. Time to work on the front ones. So you can you can see with the return lines here and just the ability for these hoses to be so flexible is just heavenly for me. And that gives us the perfect room to get around oil, filters, everything else that's just in the way. This is it, guys. This is the cleanest setup I have, ignoring all the wires, but the actual fuel system, a solid 8AN in, splitting off to both fuel rails. Both fuel rails come out, they go to the regulator. The regulator has the pressure sensor built into it. Of course, there's gonna be a vacuum line going to the intake manifold. And then the bottom of this feeds up. We can check flex fuel sensing and temperature, and then it goes, returns back into the fuel tanks. The reason we're splitting this video up into two pieces is this is very much RX-7. This is very much rotary, and this is a clean, perfect way of setting up E85. The back half, Oh, wait till you see what sort of weirdness a Corvette has. This vehicle has two gas tanks, it has saddlebag tanks, and there's a fuel line from one that pressurizes the other one that spins a pump. There's a lot of weirdness that goes on back there. So that part of the video is how to upgrade a C5 Corvette to make it E85 compatible. So here we go. There's a clean setup there. Let's attack this.